carbocation rearrangements. Let's talk about this in detail. Anytime a carbocation is formed in a chemical reaction, it is subject to rearrangement if either a hydride shift or a methide shift would result in a more stable carbocation. How do we know what carbocation is more stable? Well, more substituted is more stable. Right now, we're starting out with a secondary carbocation. And we have that methyl is least stable, then primary, then secondary. So we're already pretty stable. Tertiary is even more stable. And there's one that's less stable than methyl, that's vinylic. More stable than tertiary would be allylic. In any case, here we have to ask ourselves, can we get to a tertiary carbocation? We're not worried about allylic because there are no pi bonds in this molecule. So, we look at the carbon atoms that neighbor our carbocation. Since it's secondary, we have two. This one and this one. Then we identify hydrogens and methyl groups on those neighboring atoms. So, the carbon on the left has two hydrides that we could shift. The carbon on the right has a hydride and a methide that we could shift. Now we've identified these four different groups we could shift. We could do two different hydride shifts. Those would give the same result. Or this hydride shift. Or we could do this methide shift. Will doing any of these get us from secondary to tertiary? Well, let's try. What if we did a methide shift from the left-hand carbon? Like that. This would put our carbocation here, which would still be secondary. So there's no benefit to that. It's not going to happen. There's no driving force in increased stability. And if we did this other hydride that's on the same carbon, we would get the same result. All right, forget about hydride shifts. What if we did a methide shift? So here we go. So we've moved the methyl group one place to the left, which puts our carbocation here, and the degree of substitution there is secondary. No driving force for that either. What if we tried shifting this hydride? So here we go. Now, that gives us a tertiary carbocation. So, this is the rearrangement that's going to happen. According to our textbook, tertiary carbocations won't rearrange unless a resonance stable cation is formed. Some of my OCHEM colleagues don't necessarily agree with this that if you can form another tertiary cation, that may happen. But you could definitely do a methide shift here.
like so. Right, and that would give us a carbocation that is both tertiary and allylic. Allylic is resonance stabilized and therefore more stable than tertiary. Here's an exercise for you to try. I've got this carbocation and I want you to draw the curved arrows and show the carbocation rearrangement get, gives you the most stable carbocation. which is therefore most likely. So, pause your video, work the problem, resume to see the answer. We start out by identifying the degree of substitution. We're starting out secondary. What groups do we have nearby? Well, there's a proton or two methyls that we could shift. Or two other hydrogen atoms that we could shift. Which one is going to give us the most stable product? Well, if we do a hydride shift, sorry, if we do a methide shift starting here to here, that would give us a secondary carbocation. That's no more stable than what we're starting with. If we did a hydride shift from here to here, that would give us a tertiary carbocation with the C plus here. Is that the most stable? What if we did a hydride shift from here? That would give us a carbocation that's allylic and resonance stabilized is the most stable. So that's what we're gonna do. So there's our curved arrow. Now let's draw the result. Right, and just, uh, just to get an idea of everything that's going on here, let's draw in the hydrogens. Now we have two here. So, one of these came from here, and don't forget, there's still one hydrogen here.